Hello and welcome to the seventh video in the A-Level Biology series. This video is going to be part one of a two-part series covering energy and respiration in the cell. Today I will give an overview of energy and respiration, ATP and ATP synthesis and an introduction to respiration. Many activities and processes within the cell require energy. For example, active transport, anabolic reactions, which is when lots of small molecules combine to produce larger molecules, or movement, such as spindle formation and movement of chromosomes in cell division. Respiration in all living cells releases energy from the breakdown of organic molecules, such as carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. This results in the transfer of chemical potential energy from nutrients into a usable energy form through the synthesis of universal cellular energy currency, adenosine triphosphate, also known as ATP. This is the equation for respiration. Some organisms, such as plants, synthesize their own usable carbon compounds from carbon dioxide in the atmosphere through photosynthesis. These organisms are called autotrophs. Humans are considered heterotrophs because we require a supply of pre-made usable carbon compounds which we obtain from food. ATP and ATP synthesis ATP is a universal energy currency in all organisms. Like money, it is used for many processes and can be spent and reused countless times. ATP is a small, soluble molecule which provides short-term store of energy which cells can use. The average human uses more than 50 kilograms of ATP in one day. ATP is a phosphorylated nucleotide consisting of ribose, adenine base, and free phosphate groups. The use of ATP for energy is beneficial because ATP can be hydrolyzed very quickly by one enzyme called ATPase. The molecule is small with a small energy release, reducing the risk of waste. ATP is stable at cellular pH. ATP is soluble and can move easily within the cell. ATP can be recycled and reused. ATP is hydrolyzed into adenosine diphosphate and phosphate. As ADP forms, free energy is released. Remove one phosphate from ATP gives ADP and 30.8 kilojoules per gram free energy release. Removing the second phosphate group gives adenosine monophosphate, or AMP, and 30.8 kilojoule per gram free energy release. Removal of the final phosphate group gives adenosine and 14.2 kilojoule per gram free energy release. There are two types of ATP synthesis. There is approximately 200 grams of ATP in the body at a given time. We are not able to build up and store large stockpiles of ATP, so our cells need to synthesize ATP as and when they need it. The synthesis of ATP also requires energy to occur. So ATP synthesis requires ATP. There are two methods of ATP synthesis found in respiration and photosynthesis. One, substrate linked phosphorylation. And two, chemiosmosis. I will briefly summarize these methods in this video and cover in more detail in the second part. Substrate linked phosphorylation is when the phosphate of a substrate molecule is directly transferred to ADP using energy provided by another reaction. This can occur in the cytoplasm and the mitochondrial matrix. During respiration, this occurs during glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. 
This produces 4 to 6 ATP per glucose molecule. Chemiosmosis Energy released by the movement of protons down a concentration gradient is used to synthesize ATP via ATP synthase. This occurs in the inner mitochondrial membrane and the thylakoid membrane of chloroplasts in the electron transport chain. This produces 32 to 34 ATP per glucose molecule. Coenzymes NAD and FAD are crucial in both aerobic and anaerobic respiration. NAD and FAD accept hydrogen ions which become available at various points in respiration. When NAD and FAD gain hydrogen ions, they become reduced. They come together for the final stage of respiration when they donate the hydrogen, protons and electrons from earlier stages of respiration to the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain is when the protons are driven across the inner mitochondrial membrane, creating a proton gradient. When protons move back into the matrix down the proton gradient, they provide the energy to synthesize ATP by passing through proton channels and enzyme ATP synthase. The equation for the reduction of NAD and FAD Oxidation is the reverse of these equations. Coenzyme A is involved in the oxidation of pyruvate in the Krebs cycle of aerobic respiration. NAD, FAD and coenzyme A undergo reversible reactions and can be used and recycled many times during respiration. This is important to sustain the amount of ATP or energy our cells need to produce. Glucose is the main respiratory substrate for aerobic respiration in most cells. When the supply of glucose in the cell has been used up, respiration may continue with other substrates such as other carbohydrates giving 15.8 kilojoules per gram of energy, proteins giving 17 kilojoules per gram, and lipids, which give 39.4 kilojoule per gram. Lipids give the highest due to the high concentration of hydrogen within the fatty acid chains. RQ is a ratio of carbon dioxide produced to oxygen taken in during respiration. The respiratory quotient is the amount of carbon dioxide divided by oxygen. For example, Linoleic acid is a fatty acid with 18 carbon, 32 hydrogen, and 2 oxygen atoms. Now let's look at the respiratory equation. Now let's change glucose to linoleic acid and balance the equation. And now put the values for carbon dioxide and oxygen into the RQ equation. The RQ equals 18 divided by 25 equals 0 0.72. The molecules with a higher hydrogen content will result in a greater proton gradient, which allows for the formation of more ATP through chemiosmosis, which we will cover in more detail in the next video. The energy value differs between lipids, carbohydrates and proteins due to the number of hydrogens. More hydrogen produces more ATP and more oxygen is required to break down the molecule. Thank you for watching today's video, we hope to see you next week for the next video in the series which will be part 2 of energy and respiration, in which we will bring together what was covered in this video to learn the stages of aerobic and anaerobic respiration in more detail.